Welcome to the DNA Talks podcast, where we take on the mission of unlocking the code of your genetics. This season is all about you, upgrading your health, not just on the surface, but down to the root cause. Join us as your clinicians at the DNA company investigate your DNA and beyond. The intention of this podcast is to enhance your lifestyle by changing what is in your control. This does not substitute the medical advice given by your personal doctor, therapist, and other healthcare professionals. All right, folks, welcome to DNA Talks, another episode coming to you live from the A4M 2023. I'm here with Paul from a wonderful new technology that we're going to talk to you all about as it pertains to EEG called Wavi Medical. Thank you. So uh, I just had my test. I'm excited. We're going to reveal this on a whole, you know, longer format podcast yes. in the near future. So stay tuned for that. Tell us all about a lot of folks are, uh, you know, familiar somewhat with EEG and the concept of brain, uh, you know, reading, or if you will, patterns yep. as they pertain to brain yep. reading. Tell us what uh, you're all about and what you're doing at Wavi. Yeah, I think at its core, what Wavi's really trying to do is bring affordability and accessibility to the brain measurements. You know, we have all of these wonderful biomarkers, especially especially in our space, for just longevity, longevity protocols, right? Including DNA, methylation pathways. But really, the thing that we've missed, or not missed, but there hasn't been great accessibility to, is just the brain. And that's because of affordability. And so what Wavi's really strive to do is bring the most accessible and, and reliable data through EEG, as I was kind of saying, more evoke potentials. Right. So actually the central processing capability of the brain. And so what we do is we provide practitioners with a really easy, simplistic way of incorporating brain health into, or rather just brain cognition into their practices. Okay, great. So, you know, before we even get into the differentiation of, uh, of the product itself, electroencephalograph, that's really what we're talking about, using instrumentation to read the evoked potential from your brain. What is your brain signaling? Uh, we are bioelectric beings. Uh, tell, because, you know, we've long known that this is an, a type of instrumentation that could give us some insights from the brain. But what exactly is Wavi doing differently as it pertains to the leads, where they sit, and, and exactly what is it reading as it pertains to information that's usable to the end consumer or clinician? Uh, and as that pertains to any potential interventions that we might implement in order yeah. to see better health and wellness? Great question. So what we're really looking at at its core is, like I said, nothing new. Yeah. A, we are a fully FDA cleared EEG device. So we are a 20 lead EEG, 19 lead with one ground. And I think that's very important to kind of uh, distinctify about us. On top of that, what we're really looking at is that evoke potential. And through that, we're looking at P300 speed and voltage. And those two markers are looking at how much energy our brain has to actually process sensory information with, as well as how quick that signal happens. The real bread and butter of the Wavi system is when we're able to establish a baseline scan, we can there, then there's uh, actually do subsequent scans to see how the brain is changing. This can be year over year wellness assessments. It could be pre post injury something like concussions. Right. Uh, this could be post-injury rehab, so looking at traumatic brain injuries and what are the efficacious therapies that are actually helping someone's brain and looking at neuroplasticity as a whole. Even just on that longevity marker as well, how much can we shift things to a preventative aspect? So if I can scan someone on a year-over-year -year basis or practitioners can scan someone on a year-over-year -year basis, if we start to see a slip in cognitive you know, performance, what can we actually do and what are the interventions that are helping us start to either bring that cognition back up right. or hopefully optimize it and keep it at least at a baseline level? Love it. You mentioned a really important term, uh, neuroplasticity <clears throat> off yeah. camera. Uh, we were talking and uh, geeking out about that. I think it's a medical buzz term of the day for a very good reason. We want and need more of it into older age to prevent and reduce cognitive decline potential. Uh, at the DNA company, of course, we look at uh, executive function, mood, and behavior within which we study the BDNF gene, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, and then, of course, try to intervene on that. Uh, so I'd love to hear a little bit more about how clinicians using the Wavi technology develop insights, what that literally looks like for them in the evoked potential yeah. outputs, and how user-friendly, frankly, as I've just seen, uh, your reporting system is. We pride ourselves on user-friendliness, um, and I've seen it for myself, yours is as well. What kinds of 
pictures are we seeing within the brain that might also depict that this individual is having a problem with neogenesis and with neuroplasticity? Yeah. So P300 voltage, as I've kind of referenced, right? We have a bucket of cognitive information that our brain can process information with, right? There's a certain amount in that bucket. And as things like inflammation start to take out of that bucket, our brain isn't able to process sensory information with as much energy, right? And so what we see like post-traumatic brain injury is that bucket is substantially depleted. Think of mitochondrial energy, right? Our brain is not processing information nearly as efficiently. You know, the best definition I've ever heard for a concussion is actually a mitochondrial, just uh, metabolic crisis of the brain. And it's a metabolic issue, ATP production of the actual mitochondria that we're seeing. And so what we can look at is post rehab of a TBI or neuroplastic conditions, hopefully, what are the therapies that are actually helping reboost that P300 voltage? This could be hyperbarics, it could be photobiomodulation, it could be nutrition and or exercise involved, it could be a reduction of, of inflammation due to low glycemic, you know, sauna, sauna you know, maybe vitamin D, exercise, you name a lot it, of supplementation. Things. What works for me might not work for you. Right. And this right. is where we really need a, a true scale, but also a very simple scale to be able to utilize this, not only for the patient, but for the practitioner to actually start making some educated decisions on what is actually helping the patient. And, you know, I know you guys pride yourself on obviously being evidence-based, uh, very strictly a class two medical device. But I imagine some of the resistance that some folks might feel on, you know, getting some insights into their brain is because they may feel uh, that they're being compared to population and these numbers. Absolutely. About, and, 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 and what you guys purport, of course, is the importance of understanding, especially as it pertains to cognitive decline uh, and, and the, the eventuality that you want to dampen that potential, that you're really baselining and challenging yourself and of one against yourself in the future. That is the key. And, and, and how, does, how do clinicians need to understand that as they relate this to studying their uh, patient? Because at the end of the day, scientists are getting a little bit more in tune with the power of N of 1 over time. I mean, yeah, that's oh, what absolutely. clinical practice is. So give us some insights. Give a clinician who's listening in at home some insights as to how important this is to have their patients understand, no, this is you against yourself over time. You to you is the key here. Right. You to you is absolutely the key. Right, we'll take my story. I've had more concussions than anyone should have. I was a, you know, aspiring competitive snowboarder. I was a downhill mountain, mountain biker as I was growing up. And I would throw my head just at about everything that it would actually stick to as a child, right? <laughs> okay. So my cognitive baseline is going to be substantially different than someone else's that hadn't had 10, 12, 13 concussions, right? But really what I'm looking at are what are the therapies as I continue to age that are keeping my baseline at least normative? How do I maintain my cognitive functionality? And that's the importance. I'm not looking at what everyone else is doing because my brain is not what everyone else's brain is. Right, Your patient's brains are not, it's not here, you versus me. Right. It's me versus me on an annual basis. And then if anything does happen, I get in a car accident, I have a concussion, I at least have a comprehensive brain scan that shows me what my baseline voltage and P300 speed was so that I can start to strive to either get back to that or I can hopefully improve with optimization. Brilliant. And at the DNA company, you know, we're all a part of the same uh, ilk when we're helping individuals understand you are unique. You are like no one else on the planet and it is you against yourself and you want to live longer and healthier health span. Yeah. Um, and so there's no such thing as bad genes. There's only what genes you have and the cards mom and dad have dealt you and how you manage those genes over time. So I see this, I see Wavi as a brilliant, you know, side or in parallel assessment tool. Once an individual uh, understands their genetic profile, knows that there is some work to be done as it pertains to cognitive function, mood and behavior, to have their clinician or in some cases even themselves independently assess baseline, then impart the interventions we we're talking about. Uh, and then be able to reassess and know they're on the right track. Where can people hear uh, or find out a little bit more about the Wavi system? So you can find us on social at Wavi Med. Um, you can also follow me personally, which I post a lot of brain content at PJ Sorbo. So both of those are great resources. Outside of that, we are continuing to uh, increase our partnerships. 
Um, as we were talking about off camera, a lot of the new uh, practitioners we're working with, a lot of clinics nationwide, will continue to roll Wavi out and hopefully that uh, everyone gets a chance to get one. Excellent. And I encourage you to follow up with us uh, on a subsequent episode of the DNA Talks with Paul, talking about my own personal results of the Wavi system. It was quite the experience, very easy to do. The reporting is incredibly easy to understand, and we're going to pick it all apart and let you know what my brain is doing or maybe not doing in some instances. Paul, thanks so much for joining us. Really Appreciate excited. It. Thank you so all much.